May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters of Christ, today we have the grace to celebrate the feast of a giant of the sacred scripture, a priest, a confessor, and a doctor of the Holy Catholic Church, Saint Jerome. His reputation rests primarily on his achievements as a translator and a scriptural exegete. The important service that this great saint and doctor has rendered to the church in his doctrinal works is often overlooked today or even minimized by those who look for their originality and independence of thought. Saint Jerome was not a theologian in the strict sense of the word. He was no original thinker and he never abandoned himself to personal meditation of the dogma as for example Saint Augustine of Hippo. Although he strictly, although he kept strictly to, to what he found in tradition, the importance of his doctrinal authority is not thereby lessened. He entered into these great controversies of the time against Helvidius, Jovinian, Vigilantius in the Origenists, and even the Pelagians, and refuted their heretical teachings on grace, on asceticism, on the perpetual virginity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, on the veneration of the saints and their relics. So eloquently he refuted their arguments and so soundly that these heresies never again seriously threatened the church in his time. This is the greatness of this saint today. He was born in the year 347 in the region of northeast Italy in Venice. His father sent him as a young man to Rome to perfect his education under a famous tutor. He was a superb student and mastered very quickly the languages of Latin and Greek. At the age of 30 years, he decided he would become a monk and travel then to the desert in Syria, where for four years he lived a life of austerity, penance, and isolation. He fasted from the classics he loved so much, and instead he did mortification and studied Hebrew from a Jewish convert. When he finally decided to come out and leave the desert, he was ordained a priest in Antioch, but he never truly exercised any priestly ministry. He studied under the great Saint Gregory Nazianzen in Constantinople and began then to publish some translations and commentaries on the Holy Scripture. In the year 382 then, he found himself in Rome with his bishop to serve as his interpreter and aid. At that time, the Holy Father was Pope Damasus, and he was greatly impressed with Saint Jerome and asked him then to be his secretary. At this point in his 40s, living in Rome, Jerome began this monumental task of translating the entire Bible into Latin from the original Greek and Hebrew texts. This was a task given to him by Pope Damasus. It would take many years. The existing Old Latin Bible was not cohesive at the time, but a jumble of texts stitched together under one cover, so we could have a different scripture in Gaul, in France, and another scripture different in another part of the world. The one church spread throughout the whole world needed then one Bible to match its broad scope and theological unity. Jerome was the man for the job. During this period, also, we know he was surrounded by a circle of well-born and well-educated noble women in Rome, including some of the noblest patrician families. These women, such as widows, Marcella and Paula. The resting inclination, resulting inclination of these women for a monastic life and his unsparing criticism of the life, the secular life lived by the clergy in Rome at that time brought great hostility against him 
amongst the clergy and their supporters. Soon after the death of his great patron, Damasus, in the year 384, and having lost his protection, Jerome was then forced to leave his position in Rome, following an inquisition of the Roman clergy into allegations that he had proper, improper relations with his widow Paula. This was all false, of course, due to the enemies. His blunt words and fiery temper always seemed to create. Saint Jerome left then for the Holy Land. He lived then and retired in a cave near Bethlehem and focused on his great work of translating the Holy Scripture. Some of these holy and pious women followed him then to Bethlehem and formed a quasi-monastic community around him. Jerome's translation, then known as the Vulgate, became the standard Latin version of the Bible over time. Pushing out the old Latin version into oblivion, the Council of Trent, this great council, formally stated that the Vulgate was the official Bible of the Catholic Church. This sacred scripture then is not dependent on scholarly fashion and whim. It has a baseline. This great work, this Vulgate, is like a dropped anchor resting on the ocean floor. It keeps the ship of the church from drifting. Catholicism is a religion of the word more than of the book, but it has a definite definitive book nonetheless, the Vulgate. Jerome at Bethlehem lived the rest of his years in great study, prayer, and asceticism. He once said, I interpret as I should, following the command of Jesus Christ. Search the scriptures and seek and you shall find. For if, as Paul says, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God, and if the man who does not know the scripture does not know the power and the wisdom of God, then ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. The fiery Saint Jerome died peacefully in the year 420, after living through both barbarian invasions of the Roman Empire and the resurgence of riots sparked by doctrinal disputes in the church exhausted him from scholarly labours and a life of penance. His remains can be found now below the high altar of St. Mary Major in Rome in a very handsome sarcophagus. What about St. Jerome, his teaching on the Blessed Virgin Mary? He went to great lengths to defend her perpetual virginity. He wrote a tract which appeared in the year 383. The question which gave occasion to it was whether the mother of our Lord remained a virgin after his birth. Helvedius, the one who disputed this, maintained that the mention in the Gospels of the sisters and brethren of our Lord was the proof that the Blessed Virgin had subsequent issue of children. And he supported his opinion even by the writings of Tertullian and Victorinus. The outcome of his views was that the virginity, according to this Helvedius, virginity was ranked below matrimony. What did Jerome do? He vigorously takes the other side and tried to prove that the sisters, and he did prove that the sisters and brethren spoken of were either the children of Joseph by a former marriage, he said, or first cousins, children of the sister of the Virgin. He maintained against Helvidius three propositions, that Joseph was only putatively, not really the husband of Mary, that the brethren of the Lord were his cousins, not his own brethren, and more importantly, that virginity is better and more noble than the married state. Finally, there's another quality in St. Jerome's character that will console many of us who struggle to live a virtuous and holy life. Jerome was known for being a cantankerous fellow, which means quite abrupt and quite awkward. When he would get into arguments, he had this great gift of rhetoric, but he would never back down, always held his position. He struggled at times with the virtue of patience, 
and he could be overbearing with those who disagreed with him, and he had a reputation for being very eccentric. Jerome chose to be a hermit, not so much to act as a heroic act of sacrifice, but because had he lived alone, had he not lived alone, he most surely would not have been a saint. This is interesting for us to know in this man's character that he became a saint. We all fall short, dear brothers and sisters of Christ, then of God's glory. We all are impatient sinners, as Saint Jerome, in this battle to save our souls. We need to be humble as Our Lady and realize that we are nothing and God is everything. When we are big in our ego and in our own eyes, then we are little in God's eyes. Let us then be little in our own eyes and read daily the Holy Scripture to love God. We thank the Lord for the marvels and the genius worked in this instrument of grace, St. Jerome, and ask today for a burning zeal and a love for the Word of God, which cuts more deeply than a double-edged sword. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.